Hello and welcome at the second edition of Empower's Meta 3D Printing Application Special. Aviation and Space were the largest industries for metal additive manufacturing in the past years. According to our latest report, the aerospace sector is responsible for almost one third of machine sales revenue, and more than 50% of the material being used is titanium alloys. Besides conventional laser powder bed fusion, one of the very promising technologies for aerospace is wire-based deposition. The Airbus Group company Premium Aerotech is one of the first users to bring this technology to serial production. Today is a big pleasure to welcome Jan Hönningem. He's Industrialization Manager for DED Technologies at Premium Aerotech. Jan, it's very nice to have you here today. Can you give us a very brief overview of the additive manufacturing activities at Premium Aerotech? Uh, sure. Uh, thank you for the for the kind of introduction, um, and I'm looking forward to speaking with you about uh, AM and the technology branch um, directed energy deposition, or DED. Um, within the Airbus Group, several organizations uh, use the powder bed fusion technology for different purposes, um, mostly um, R&D, prototyping, um, or tooling and spare parts. Uh, however, since the beginning of the of the hype, um, Premium Aerotech was very determined to use the technology in uh, serial production. Um, so parameter development, um, uh, part development and consolidation of several parts, collaboration with equipment manufacturer to make the 3D printers more compatible with, uh, with our uh, requirements and needs. Um, or defining, uh, or defining even um, uh, specifications for for printing and testing. Those were all uh, part of the of the first years. So it was a very very long uh, road that we went down with uh, with Powderbed, and now finally it has been um, uh, successful. Yeah, we established and qualified a, a neat supply chain, delivering uh, cost and uh, performance optimized uh, parts and serial production. Uh, since 2016, we deliver uh, the first part. Been um, uh, everywhere in the news for the uh, for the A400M uh, military aircraft. And since the last year, we deliver three components for uh, for the A350 civil program as well. Um, so pretty cool. And um, now finally to fully exploit uh, the technology of Powderbed, where you have endless possibilities. Uh, we uh, we successfully have a process qualification. So that means uh, not every part uh, needs to be qualified, but whatever we print effectively is already uh, qualified if we stick to our uh, supply chain. That makes everything a lot uh, more agile and uh, and quicker to bring new parts uh, to the to the aircraft. Uh, yeah, but. Um, PAG or Premium Aerotech is a manufacturer of uh, large aerostructures. So our portfolio contains a lot of rather simple meter scale structural components that uh, first you can't make them uh, with powder bed because they're too large for the equipment. And um, they are more suitable for direct energy deposition in general. So we are using now both technologies and they are not a competitor um, uh, to each other, but they uh, yeah work work very well for all the different uh, for all the different applications that we uh, that we have. So we identified a, a global business potential for um, for our parts, and we want to start uh, the qualification of the first primary structure uh, part with DED uh, next year. So you're focusing on wire-based additive manufacturing at Premium Aerotech. And what is the value proposition of this technology for an aircraft component supplier? Yeah, it's it's very different from uh, from powder bed, if I may compare again. Um, in powder bed, it's typically uh, brackets or uh, consolidated um, um, assemblies. So effectively, it's very difficult to make parts cheaper with powder bed, but you can improve parts. With uh, DED, that's uh, that's not the value proposal at all. Uh, with uh, DED, it is uh, solely um, saving uh, material costs uh, or, but, or finally, uh, and finally the part costs. 
So we don't do a topology optimization. Uh, we make a simple one-to-one -one, uh, replacement um, and, uh, and save material costs. And uh, for example, um, with the introduction of the A350 in, in 2015, it's an, uh, with, an, with an carbon fiber uh, uh, mainframe, you have um, uh, the problem that aluminum, which you typically would like to, lose, uh, you, to use, uh, that's not compatible with uh, with carbon fiber. So this this is the reason why um, a lot of titanium had to be used in um, in the in the in the body. Um, those are very expensive. Those are several meters in size. Uh, the material is expensive, and uh, it's also very expensive to uh, to process it. So um, yeah, to cope with um, with all the demand, because suddenly we had to uh, process a lot of titanium, we had to uh, significantly, uh, significantly uh, improve the cost. Um, but by far, because we have, we're talking about parts of meter scale, buy to fly above, uh, above 20 and so on. So that means that 95% uh, of, uh, of all the material, it's, it's scrap. And when you buy titanium, you pay somewhere around $50 per kilo, and the scrap is virtually worth uh, nothing. So uh, yeah, some of the parts cost uh, easily uh, 10 thousands uh, per piece, and that's what we're targeting. Can you um, give us more details about the applications you're targeting with, with this technology? Like, where's the impact of for this industry, especially from a commercial perspective? Okay, so for for our industry, I guess it's very different from uh, from from other industries. DED can be very good for uh, for lead time savings, for example. Um, but for us, it's it's really a recurring cost. And if you look at an aircraft, uh, you have a, you have four regions. Uh, that contain expensive titanium parts. That is the uh, the landing gear, uh, the wings, um, the pylon, so uh, the structure holding the um, uh, the turbine, the nacelle, uh, and and the aero structure. And all of them have basically um, titanium components with very different uh, geometries and characteristics. So um, you can and uh, and and furthermore, they they might look very very different from each other, but they have one thing in common. Uh, apart from that, they are expensive. They are also very very critical. Uh, and introducing a new technology comes uh, typically not um, uh, in in the way that you introduce the most critical parts first. You have to uh, introduce small parts with uh, low criticality uh, in, in the beginning to, um, um, to show the authorities that you're able to, um, um, to install this part um, um, in an industrial environment. And then you may go to the, to the more interesting parts. Unfortunately, there are not so many low critical parts. So that's a bit of um, the challenge that we, uh, that we have. But we are trying to um, mature this technology and once it is uh, established, um, you can have uh, another com uh, commercial advantage, uh, which is when you wh when when you're happy with the technology and when you're very um, confident about it, uh, you may use it to make uh, parts with it. Then you that you cannot any other way. But then we are not, and that's uh, when we talk about uh, next generation uh, aircrafts. Um, for for the current generations. Uh, we are looking at uh, one to one uh, replacement okay so no design optimization but you print a raw part a raw bulk part and then you use a conventional machining process just yet you have less scrap less scrap material around uh, right. correct mm -hmm. and you always have to have uh, a fallback solution um, before you put it in production so the parts that we are going to make, um, if something happens, we still have the option to machine it uh, from plate. It's not that we want it, but we have to demonstrate that we have this option. 
So as I understand, it's not yet fully embedded in production. Um, where, where is the maturity level and uh, for, for really flying parts? And what are the challenges you are now dealing with in those last steps before entering production? So from my experience, um, I think uh, it is already relatively mature, but because of uh, what I said is that it mostly targets the most critical parts on the aircraft. Uh, that is uh, the main reason what's, what uh, has been stopping the technology from being more widely used uh, on, on aircraft. Um, so, so does that mean the technology actually doesn't really have to change? It's mostly on the user side to implement it, to accept it, and to make all the proofs that need to be done. Uh, yes, um, and that is very expensive because you have to demonstrate by building many large parts from high value material, um, perform a lot of tests, destructive and non-destructive. Um, so the, uh, the first step basically is extremely expensive and you need to convince um, um, all the shareholder and the, and, and the customer, which are this, uh, the civil programs, that um that in the future they're gonna save a lot but in the beginning you need to convince them to spend a lot of money in order to uh, deliver part basically at the same price up to your estimation what, what what kind of forecast can you give us from from your experience now and from your uh technical perspective when when will parts be ready when will parts be flying in aircraft that we are flying with soon again hopefully well, it's been in the news that um, there, there, there is currently a supplier being uh, qualified as a uh, supplier together with, uh, with, a, with, a, with a machine. Um, so the installation should happen uh, relatively quickly, or in other words, must happen quickly. So there is a lot of uh, interest um, of people to... Um, um, to be quick on that, because we have to, because the the competition is is quick as well. So I hope that on our side, uh, we will deliver the first part to our assembly line in in 2022. We talked a lot about technology now, and um, but I think it's it's also always very interesting to to learn a bit more about company struggles and company challenges and success factors to implement this technology. You mentioned already yet that you you have a large investment for qualification efforts. Um, but besides that, uh, how do you deal, for example, with with um, uh, uh, traditional engineering methods that have been established for a long time? Do you need to convince people? Are there certain methods that you can put in to actually implement the technology, not only from a technology perspective, but also from a, from a company and strategic perspective? Um, if I try to convince uh, people, they uh, first they hear uh, additive manufacturing. So um, that second, they think about uh, powder bed. We need to get rid of that because uh, they are not at all uh, the same. Um, DED is a lot closer to machining from plate or machining forgings and, and castings. Um, and you need to get these parts on the uh, on the shop floor because um, engineers need to be uh, aware of that. Engineers need to be aware of the of the design freedom. Um, designers need to know what um, uh, or how they can um, uh, design uh, new parts. Um, so a lot of communication and transparency is 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 really really needed, and uh, you need to engage uh, the. Uh, the customers and the and the shareholders uh, on a, on a frequent basis. That's that's very important. That's th this is the first point to convince the customer. And second, you need to convince um, the um, uh, the qualification authorities. And uh, we have an internal uh, qualification authority that wants to see, obviously, a lot of tests first. So you need to demonstrate for both sides uh, quality and price. Okay, now um, we talked about wire deposition mostly, and I think this, this is uh, your, your, your major and, and your focusing in this field. But 
if we now look into other 3D printing technologies that that claim high deposition rates, large parts that might fit into um, into the components that you're looking at, especially in titanium alloy. There, there are technologies like cold spray. Um, digital alloys is very active in this field. Are there certain technologies that that stick out that you say um, have a potential in the future? Would is it even possible that the applications you're looking at now are going to change again technologies or is it more going to be a, a complementary future uh, DED or, or high deposition rate technology out there? Um, well, f first of all, I'm a big fan of cold spray. I'm a big fan of um, dual printing by, by digital alloys. Um, looking at the commercial side in our industry, uh, these these technologies may target relatively similar geometries, so it will be challenging to replace a DED uh, with a um, with a different um, high deposition rate uh, technology um, because you make the parts already. Um, but uh, I really see this parts in 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 other industries. Or um, you mentioned uh, cold spray which is where you're not melting the part so effectively it's uh, it's solid state um, same as uh, dual printing which is not completely liquid um, but um, at the same time uh, you can uh, definitely mention a friction stir additive um, and and all these technology uh, and all these uh, technologies address um, different uh, materials you can you can um, make unweldable metal preforms um, so I think they have a good chance at uh, at inconel or even um, or, or even aluminium alloys. Um, but for titanium material production, it's gonna it's gonna be uh, difficult for these, unfortunately. All right. Well, thank you very much. I think that that gave us a very good insight into into your activities, and I think what we learned again is applications is is one of the key point in in additive finding the right applications but we also learned that um yeah. in in your industry especially and there might be some uh, there are some others definitely that also have to always consider the high investments for qualifications is it's not that easy it takes several years until you really can bring it into production until you earn out afterwards it was it was a pleasure talking to you thank you very much for those very valuable insights thank you very much uh, absolutely. It was uh, nice talking to you as well. And um, I'm happy if there are any uh, follow-up discussions. Uh, so thanks again for the invitation. And I hope that um, we, we, are, uh, we are able to announce uh, something next year. All right. Well, that, that was it for today's special in aviation for wire technologies, for wire DED technologies. Thanks for watching today's special and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time.